Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called God Said Look At Me. So it's like, I was thinking about the economic collapse coming today. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money. They don't seem to listen to get their money out of the stock market. <laughs> Um, and then God said to me, well, don't look at your money or your parents' money or something. Look at my money. So it's like God said, don't look at your wallet, Rod. Not what you look at my wallet. And then God said something to me like, uh, don't look at your muscles, Rod. Look at my muscles. Don't look at your wisdom, Rod. Look at my wisdom. And then I was thinking, well, God's been around for a long time. He's been learning a lot, or he knows a lot, or something. <laughs> Much greater than me. God's muscles are greater than mine. His money's greater than mine. And uh, his wisdom's greater than mine. So if we ever want to get rid of stuff like fear, depression, anger, and stuff, we got to learn to trust in God, not trust in ourselves. i got to learn to trust in God, not Rod. So that's been speaking powerfully to me today. It says in the Bible, like, the pure in heart shall see God. Well, I don't know whether I'll see him a, a part of him on earth or not, but uh, on earth it's more like uh, seeing things spiritually. It says that we could come into God's presence now. It's like uh, you can see him spiritually, I guess. The pure in heart. Draw close to God and he'll draw close to you. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So God's been speaking that a lot to me lately. Get your eyes on him. Put Jesus in the picture. And then you should be able to have perfect peace. Not thinking that he's distant or not here. The Bible says God is with you wherever you go. Jesus says I'm always with you. It's like when we look at God's word, it's like we're looking at God. Like God saying, look at me. Look at my word. It says in here, the word is God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus. That's God. And uh, so God had me put up some scriptures that I meditate on from the New King James dramatized audio Bible. So it's like when I first got saved, I wanted had a desire to read the Bible, but I stumbled over the words in it. And so I got the uh, dramatized King James Version audio Bible, and then I have a Bible in King James, New King James Bible, and then as I listen to the audio, if there was some parts that I really got ministered to by God through the audio, I'd underline them or something like that. And I had sort of like my favorite parts of the Bible after I went through it on audio, and then I could go to those parts and meditate on them more for answers. So it's like God wants us to go into his word. It's like if you love God, you love his word. And, and you can't say that it's too impossible to read or something like that. If you want to listen to it on audio, you can. God's got different ways to teach us, not just from reading. And uh, it'll really bless us if we put our eyes on God's Word, which is like putting our eyes on God. So that's what God's trying to say to us. He's trying to say, you've got to see me in a greater way, because very difficult times are coming. It could be economic collapse, World War III. And you can't be looking at wicked people doing wickedness to other people all the time and expect to uh, have peace of mind or joy. <laughs> but if you're putting your eyes on God who is with you, like Moses at the Red Sea saying... Uh, looking at God's power, not your power, then you say that uh, God is a good, perfect Father, God can take good care of me, there's nothing too difficult for my Father God to do, He's the richest Father on earth, He owns all the gold and silver. 
So we have to have this trust in God. He's trying to teach us how to trust in Him, how to see Him spiritually more now. And not just to look at ourselves and our circumstances or other people. It's not looking at the government to take care of me. It's not looking at my parents. There's money in the bank to take care of me. Or my money in the bank. It's looking at God to take care of me. So that's what God's trying to say to us. Look at me, not you. Look at me, not you. Look at my wallet, not your wallet. Look at my muscles, not your muscles. Look at my wisdom, not your wisdom. He's everything that we need, and Jesus is too. You got the Father with you, you got the Jesus with you, you got the Holy Spirit with you, you got the angels with you. What more do you need to live a fulfilled life here on earth? And, well, but then you get a wrong image of God sometimes. You think he's like a genie or something. He doesn't want to act like that. God did not rapture Moses out of slavery or, well, he helped him to, with the Red Sea. God just doesn't take people out of suffering circumstances all the time to make them comfortable. The rich man had a comfortable life, but he went to hell forever. God's got things for us to learn through suffering, to trust in him more. It's like in the Job story. God's allowing Satan to sift Job like wheat, and Job saying, even though God allows Satan to s slay me, yet will I trust him. We could be going through lots of attacks by Satan now. <laughs> and it could be good for us, and God could help us through it. Paul was in a prison for two years. The apostle John was on the Isle of Patmos prison. Joseph was in slavery. Daniel was in slavery. They weren't getting rescued out of these situations. <laughs> like a pre-tribulation rapture or something. God wants us to be able to go through it all. If it's like something like a World War III and there's dead bodies all over or a plague or something, we've got to get our eyes off of the problems around us beyond our control and put our eyes on God who could help us through them instead. It's like God gives me visions of troubled situations, but he's with me. He's not bothered by it. He says, uh, this is what I want you to do in the troubled situation. It's when we start putting our eyes on ourselves and our muscles, our money, our wisdom, and we say, I can't handle all these problems that we get fearful. And uh, we're responsible for that, that fear. Or we're responsible for trusting the God to have perfect peace. We're responsible for our joy. Are we getting it from God spiritually? Or are we trying to get it from controlling the world and making it a better place for us? No, we need to make our relationship with God great. Not make America great again to be joyful or peaceful. And uh, so, may God continue to give us understanding of his presence with us. And hearing him say to us, look at me, look at me, look at my muscles, look at my wisdom, look at my power. Don't look at you, don't look at all the problems around you. Maybe get visions of Father God with you, holding your hand, hugging you, kissing you like the prodigal son's father. That's what he likes to do with us, spiritually. Like the prodigal son returning to his father. And understand, don't look at his love. I loved you so much, I gave my son for you. I loved you so much, I died on the cross for you. God's trying to speak to us how much he loves us. He's trying to speak to us, don't be afraid, I am here, and there's nothing too difficult for me to do. So that's what we need to do. <laughs> Put our eyes on God, not us. And uh, be comfortable in that. Put our eyes on God's bank account. And he can give me whatever I need whenever I need it. Not in my bank account. Uh, put your eyes on his muscles. He can fight the whole world and win. I can't. Put your mind on his wisdom. It's like God knows everything about everybody all the time. I don't. And just understand how awesome God is. It's like listening to the Psalms or something. It's just people getting a revelation of how awesome God is and praising Him for it. You're so awesome, God. Well, heaven's going to be well praising God forever. And we'll 
have a better sight of God in heaven, I guess. But we need to see him spiritually now. It says in the scriptures, put your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Put your mind on God. And his power, not by my might or strength, but by the Holy Spirit's power. So we're in wars here on earth, spiritual wars. We're probably going to be in physical wars sometime in the future. And we're not going to handle it by ourselves. But we can handle it with God's help too. So that's a bit about uh, God said, look at me. 